Today is the return of the Look For Less Challenge. I'm excited and I know you are too. Hello there, my name is Yami. I am your Latina Next Door. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I like high-end home decor and DIYs on a budget. And if you do too, please make sure to give this video a like and subscribe so that you too can become part of the familia. It is the return of the Look For Less Challenge. This year, I'll only be doing it every quarter, not every month. So I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for it to come back and it's finally here. If you don't know what the Look For Less Challenge is, it's basically a challenge where I ask you to take something from a high-end home decor store and recreate it yourself for a whole lot less. There's gonna be a playlist in my description box where you guys can check out everybody who participated. And if you participated, please make sure to link down below and add your video to the playlist. I'm excited to see what you guys came up with for this month. It's also a way for you all to check out new creators here on YouTube and see their talents. Today, I've got several Pottery Barn dupes that I think you'll love and I cannot wait to get started. So here we go. So I have a three Pottery Barn dupes that I'm gonna be creating. And the very first one that I'm gonna recreate are these decorative birds on wooden stands. They start at $19.50 a piece, but you can get the set for $69, and I think we can do better than that. And since we do a lot of DIYs in our home, we actually had this post in our yard, just out in the yard, okay? Don't judge. But we had it out there, it wasn't being used, and I thought, let's cut it down and create some of these little stands for these birds. And my husband was very kind to do this for me. Now the three sizes that I asked him to cut were four inch, six inch, and an eight inch cut. And he actually further trimmed off the edges to make them a little bit smaller and more square. I didn't get that footage because I was working on the birds while he was working on that. But that's what he did and as you can see here, I am just sanding off the exterior of them trying to get that bright brand new wood to just be nice and smooth and ready for stain. Once they were ready to stain, I used some leftover Varathane stain in. Once they were all sanded down nice and smooth, I began to stain them. And what I used was just regular stain by Varathane, and it was the color Early American. This was stain that was left over from previous projects, and so I decided to go ahead and use it. And I love the color that it gives to this wood. It's a nice rich color, but it's not too dark and it's not too yellow. Now as for the birds, you can get any kind of birds you want, but I did want something nice and smooth and ceramic looking. Now I got these from Hobby Lobby and they were all 50% off. However, you can always go to a thrift store and see if they have any there, you'll get them even cheaper. Now I wanted them to look just like the ones from Pottery Barn. However, you can paint these any color you want that suits your decor. Now for this spray paint, I use Krylon Color Master in the flat black. I actually purchased this at Hobby Lobby and it was a little bit more expensive than what I would normally pay for a spray paint. However, I will say it was $7 original and I got it at 30% off because it happened to be on sale when I bought it. Now I usually buy the Rust-Oleum spray paint which is a little bit less expensive. However, hands down, this is probably my favorite spray paint now. This stuff says it dries in less than 10 minutes and it absolutely does. As a matter of fact, it took less than 10 minutes to dry and it was probably because I was outside and it was kind of warm, but the finish and the speed at which this dries is amazing and it doesn't stay tacky to the touch. So honestly, for a couple more dollars than what I normally would spend, it's definitely worth the investment to get a higher quality spray paint that paints and dries so much faster. 
And for those of you who have suggested a Lazy Susan, yes, I have one for spray painting. I just have no idea where it is since we moved. So as soon as I find it, I will start using it. So once the wood pieces and the birds were dry, I brought them in and I needed to adhere them together. Now what I used was Gorilla Glue because I wanted to make sure that they stuck and did not come off. So let's see how we did. The original pieces were $69 for the set of three, and I made mine for $22. That included all three birds that were on sale for 50% off, as well as the price of that spray can of paint. So here I saved a total of $47, and I was able to get the look of the original piece. Now I did add little felt pads underneath the wood so that it wouldn't damage any of my surfaces. I already had those on hand, so I didn't include those in the price either. If you are newer here and still haven't seen my compilation of my very best look for less dupes of all time, I'll make sure to add that video in the description box below so that you guys can check it out after you watch this video. All right, so for this next DIY, we're gonna be recreating this ceramic table lamp, which by the way, the middle one goes for $349 for a lamp, people. I mean, I know it's pretty, but $349 for one lamp? Okay, I think we can do better than that. All right, so about a week ago, I picked up some items from somebody on Facebook Marketplace and they had a whole bunch of lamps on the side of the road that they were getting rid of. And this was one of them. And I really like the shape of it. Now, keep in mind, it's not the exact same shape as the original Pottery Barn lamp. I am well aware of that. However, I did want to share how you can turn any lamp to get the same look of another lamp that you really like online by simply painting it. And as you can see, this lamp actually had some cracks on the inside of it. It had like two layers, a uh, clear glass on top and a ceramic on the bottom. It was beautiful, I'm sure, when it was first, you know, bought. However, it was not looking very good anymore. As a matter of fact, my husband was looking at me sideways when I picked it up from the side of the road. But I knew I could make this look so much better. So the first thing I did was give it a good clean. And what I usually do is I spray it down with a solution of half rubbing alcohol and half water and everything just comes right off and it also disinfects it. Next, I tape the top of it off and use some packing paper in order to cover up the bottom of the vase. If you recall, the original piece had a white base but it also had a nice dark top to it just underneath the lampshade and since i had already purchased this i decided to go ahead and use the same spray paint on this lamp as i did the birds i spray painted the top that was exposed and then i also ended up painting the base of the lamp that you see right there where the bulb goes in because I wanted it to look all nice and new and then I even went up further and spray painted the piece that holds up the lampshade now eventually I had to use another one that I had because the lampshade that I ended up putting on this lamp didn't quite fit this was too big the little harp thing I think it's what it's called so I had to get one that was a little bit smaller Once the flat black had dried completely, I removed the tape and then I re-taped the lamp to cover the bottom and at the very top that I had just spray painted. I decided to use the same type of paint for this lamp 
in gloss white because the lamps were indeed glossy and I do think they look really pretty this way. Now once this part was dry, I took it up to my craft room and I brought it in. And the first thing I did was sand down the base that was still exposed. The original lamp had the bottom kind of painted in a artisan, old, antique looking stoneware. So I decided I'd go ahead and do the same. And while the base is not exactly the same, you can definitely do this. So the first thing I did was sand it because I wanted to make sure that the paint that I used, because it was going to be mostly chalk paint, would adhere to it better. And I just used whatever I had on hand. I believe I used French linen and white Adirondack for this. Now the first thing I needed to do was go ahead and do the first layer of the pottery look. And that was in this gray. I did try to work as cleanly as possible, making sure that I did not touch any of the white lamp that I had previously painted. And it took about three coats of the base color in order to get everything nice and smooth with no brass showing underneath. Now in order to give it the more stone rustic look, I just simply took a makeup sponge and I dabbed it in my white paint and I just bounced it all over the base of the lamp. And all I did was add a little bit of paint onto the makeup sponge dab as much of it off and then just bounce it all over the base of the lamp there's no right or wrong if you want to go a little bit heavy on the white you can if you just want to go minimal like me you can do so also and that's pretty much it for this for the shade i actually had one already on hand i had two old lamps that I had replaced in my entryway and I decided to keep the lampshades in case I ever needed them and I'm so glad I did because I think this worked out pretty well. Okay, so let's see how we did. The original piece was $349 at Pottery Barn. My piece only cost me $5 because that's how much it cost me for the white spray paint. Remember, it was $7 with a 30% off coupon, so it was just under. Everything else, I already had on hand. Now, while this is not exactly as the original piece, I still wanted to share it because it still has the same aesthetic. So just because you might have a lamp that's a little bit of a different shape doesn't mean you can apply some painting techniques that you see on other more luxurious and expensive lamps to the ones you already have. So it was just a little food for thought there. All right, so for my last Pottery Barn dupe for this video, I am going to be replicating these recycled wood candle holders. Now for a set of three at Pottery Barn, you would pay $199, which I think is kind of crazy, but I really love this and I knew I can recreate this for so much less. Now, if you have a keen eye, you probably noticed that when I was staining these pieces earlier, there were five pieces. So my husband actually cut two more pieces for me when he cut the ones for the little birds. And I asked him to cut them in a six inch and an eight inch as well for this project. Once these were dry, I brought them in and I got some of these little craft squares from my Dollar Tree. Now the pieces in the original piece were metal, but I don't weld, so wood it is. So I decided to cut these down just under the entire size of the width of these little pillars. You'll see me here marking it. I wanted to make sure it was just a little bit inside of the edge. And since these are fairly thin, I wouldn't cut these with the big miter saw outside. So I brought them in and used my little miter box kit and cut these down to size. After they were cut, I sanded the edges down to remove any splinters and I rounded off the edges a little bit with my sandpaper. Now for this project, I did buy some of these 
wood rounds this comes in a pack of four for only 3.49 at hobby lobby i also purchased a round dowel for a little under a dollar and i cut these two pieces with my little crafting shears I sanded the ends of the dowel that I had cut off just to make sure everything was nice and smooth, but also to make sure that the dowels were nice and level at the ends and would stand up straight. Now for this piece, I wanted to glue the little dowel onto the square piece and then the little round part on top of the dowel. And I used Gorilla Glue to do this. You want to make sure you glue the little dowel piece on the center of both the square and the circle. If not, when you put a candle on it, it will fall over. <laughs> and at first you saw me kind of removing the excess glue with my little Q-tip whenever it would spill over after pushing the two pieces together. However, I realized that unfortunately it wasn't holding as good, but then I left it that way because once I paint it, it's going to look like it was a welded edge. So it was okay that it was remaining a little bit messy with the glue kind of seeping out. Now the goal of this is to make it look like metal. So I'm using my brush metal full guard paint in the color brushed black in order to get this effect. And what I did was instead of brushing the paint on it, I would dab it with my brush. I didn't want any brush strokes to give it away that it was not a metal piece. And honestly, the rough surface added to the metal look. Now this paint covers very well and you only need to use one coat. Just make sure to get all of the surfaces, including the bottom of the round wood piece. You want to make sure that after you do this, you let it sit for a while so that the paint can dry as well as the glue. So once everything is nice and dry, then you want to go and add some Gorilla Glue underneath and adhere it onto the top of one of your pillars. As you can see, I have some gold thumbtacks. These I've had for a while and I've just been using them on different projects and all I needed to do was hammer them down on all four corners. Next, I just took that same brushed metal black paint and painted over all of those thumbtacks so that way they looked like metal nails. And that was it for this DIY. All right, so let's see how we did here. Now the original piece was for a three piece set, which was $1.99. I ended up only making two candle holders. So I just took the price of each individual one and multiply it by two, which would have given me the original to come out at 132. And then for my version, I only had to buy the little round discs, the dowels, and I had the Dollar Tree little squares, but I'll go ahead and include that. So it only cost me just under five dollars and fifty cents to recreate these and i think these look pretty close all right so that's it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below which one of these dupes was your favorite again don't forget to check out the playlist below to see what everybody else created and get even more inspiration thank you all so much for everyone who participated this month i'll be back in a couple of months to share when the next look for less challenge will be i hope to see you guys next week with another home decor and diy video until then adios